So I just recently bought the Markham Pursuit HDL underwater camera and I'm going to do a little review on it and show some features about it uh, along with some underwater footage that I already captured on it. Really love that it has the recording feature. Um, the battery is apparently really good on this. A few times I've had it out it's not even gotten close to draining. The It's got a 50, 50 foot cable reel. Uh, a lot of information is shown right on this box. Uh, one thing I really like is the portability and storage. It comes with this nice portable case, which I'll show you more in a little bit. Um, but essentially the camera parts here and it allows you to access the, I guess the screen parts here and it allows you to access the camera part from the back with this nice little Velcro part that opens up to feed out the cable. 50 feet of cable as it says. Um, there is a, along with the built-in charger for the micro SD, there's also a um, HDMI conversion, which, not that I have a setup for this, but if I had an ice house or a TV and a sleeper shack or something, you could drop your camera down and then hook this up to this, to the TV through an HDMI cable, and literally have, you know, the view of the camera up on a TV, which would be pretty sweet, I suppose, if you had like an ice house out in Lake of the Woods or something like that. It's a disaster right here. This is my spinner making area, so got a lot going on right up in this workstation. But directional display is kind of helpful to try to find your bait and know what way you're pointing. So obviously it just works like a compass. If you're seeing fish in a certain direction, you just compare that to the compass to know exactly what way you want to drill your holes or to, to see your bait down there. Um, it also shows the camera depth, how far down you are in the water column, um, along with the recording status. Pretty, pretty simple to use, honestly. So, a lot more specs right here. I'll just show this to you if anyone looking at considering buying one wants to pause and look through some more of that. Um, yeah. Otherwise, on the inside. Um, came with this pack, like I said, the charger, which I have plugged into the wall over there. This is the charging cord right here. A, the, the HDMI, I could put this on for like a shoulder strap to go from here to here, I haven't done that yet. So here I'll open up the inside part so you can see that this flips up be able to turn the camera on here's the record button and then we've got menu and then LED light and infrared or IR I think that means in, yeah infrared um, adjustments on the camera which I'll show you in a bit in the back here is the velcro which is where that feeds out of I'll show you what that looks like right here um, honestly the times I've used it I just take the whole thing out of the case I felt like I had better luck using that the uh, this allows you to wind it up there's a clip right here to ensure that doesn't unravel you undo that now it'll spin and obviously you can wind also when the camera's down and there's weight on it it winds up a little bit better then you can lock that back into place right here there are also these little grooves on the sides which can allow you to lock that in there so it's no longer going to unravel so that's that's helpful to create a kind of mess like that here is the actual camera which once again it's nice that it comes in this drainable water um, mesh bag so it protects the camera lens right here see how this hooks up to change your camera angle if you want it to be like a 90 degree angle it's there and then you can obviously adjust a whole bunch of this to change the angle that it's going to fall at so for example, I had it at the 90 degree, and you can switch that very easily. Hanging down at 90 degrees right there. If I wanted it to be more like downward angling, I can change that pretty simple just by rotating that. So here we go. Let's turn it on, see what it looks like. There it goes. And now I'm looking right back at the old GoPro. <laughs> um, so that's, that's going right now. 
You can see the direction in the upper right that it's facing. North, southwest, west. Oops, pointing it into the bright light. Oh wow, look at how it adjusts with the brightness there. Um, so I'm gonna turn the turn this light off now just so you can see. If I want to change some of the like LED lights, as soon as I turn that on, there's those lights down there. Lights on the camera, and I can turn turn how much I want them to turn on based on how dark it is. So it's kind of nice fishing at night, you know. You can drop down there and see some things. If I turn the LEDs off and go to the infrared, you'll notice that isn't nothing, anything that shows up. You're not going to see that on the lens. But underwater, it, it really makes more of a difference, um, reflecting kind of objects going by it. If I From settings, I can view my library to see the files I have on the card. And I can also go to settings and just just change things like monitor brightness, um, time if you want your timestamp to be on there. Um, let's get out of that. Some sit video settings. I can change the resolution that I want it to record with. Cycle record, date stamp, all options there. System settings. I haven't even messed with this much, but really just changes the time, date, choose your format. Calibrate if your compass is ever off. That's nice to recalibrate that. Um, and then photo settings, very similar. All the, all the really is is date stamping. So pretty simple thing to use. Right now I don't have the SD card in, but this is where you would put the SD card in. Um, SD, there's the one that uh, charges it. And then this one right here, hard to see, but that one right there is the one that I would hook up, I believe, for the HDMI. I don't have an SD card in right now to record. What I will do is share some of the recorded footage that I already got so you can see it in action. So far, excited about it. Looking forward to using it more. Maiden voyage with my dad out on the backwaters of the Mississippi. I've got it sped up here, obviously. As it goes down, notice how it went from green to like darker color as it gets deeper. And right away on the first drop, there was a, a big old crappie suspended that we saw. And there's my dad's jig right there. He was jigging about four feet away this is in the shack and I was just freaking out in the moment thinking it was going to bite and it looked at it all flared up and rejected the offering um swam away dropped it down to the bottom saw some bluegill there's a bass cruising through you can see that log in the background this is probably like 16 feet deep here definitely a little blurrier here came a big pike I shouldn't say blurrier but you notice I lost the color farther deep down um big pipe swam through big old bluegill was checking out the camera this is all without the infrared on right now there's no infrared lights or led lights this is just the pure camera and this was about midday so it was it was sunny out um once again i have this video sped up these fish were fish were super lethargic but just a bunch of gills cruising around Hard to really gauge their size. Looks like this was a bass in the background. I, I'm not sure. That gill is massive, though. This came through on four speed, four times four speed. Um, and then I think the coolest footage lifted it up suspended and got this crappie here with some shad swimming through. And it was pretty sweet seeing that crappie eye up this shad. We had tip upset this day for pike and never got a flag. And after seeing these shad, swimming through it makes a lot of sense about why we were not getting bit on the tip-ups because there is no shortage of food i mean look at that thing just asking to get chomped i'll bet some bigger crappie like the one in the background even eat a shad on occasion they were just just cruising around then i think this is a catfish tell me if i'm wrong but seems to be a catfish cruising through and then right here, I honestly don't know what this fish is. You can see those black fins. I kind of lifted the camera up right at the last second. I almost thought walleye right there. Like, ah, uh, once again, this was like 20-something feet of water. So it's not super clear, but this is also Mississippi River backwaters. So it's, you know, it's got a little cloudiness. I turned the LED lights on there. 
you'll notice the difference how the sediment pops a little bit more with the light shining. Um, never got another glimpse of that potential walleye. This is the IR now. So once again, shows up more fish, but it will also show up the sediment better. I think that's another catfish up top. It's cruising through, and then I believe this is a sheephead. It just faintly was there. So hope this video helps, and follow along for more. I'm going to have a lot of content coming through.